In our last video, we shared our routine maintenance experience at First Truck Center in Abbotsford, British Columbia. In part two, we'll explain why we take care of some maintenance tasks ourselves and why we leave others to the pros. We'll also tell you about an issue with our RV that First Truck found, which could have led to a breakdown or a fire. Sometimes people get the impression that being a DIY RVer means handling every repair and maintenance task yourself. But there are actually a lot of factors to consider when deciding which items you'll handle on your own. Have you got the knowledge and skills needed for the job? Some items on your maintenance list might require special training or physical abilities. Some jobs require tools that are highly specialized, very expensive, or too large to be carried around in an RV. Cost is a personal factor that each RVer needs to decide based on their individual financial situation. Some maintenance items that we can do ourselves might get left to the pros anyway, just for convenience or due to lack of time. Sometimes decisions can come down to simple quality of life choices. If you're a part-timer, do you have a place at home or work where you can comfortably and safely work on your RV? If you're a full-timer, how easy is it to find an RV park or other location that doesn't prohibit vehicle maintenance? There are also safety factors to consider. Are you confident enough to work on your own brake system? And what about your expertise level when it comes to inspections? Do you have the experience to spot problems early, like the ones our first truck center technicians found? All of these decisions are up to each RVer to make for themselves, figuring out their own comfort and confidence levels for each specific task. Here are the maintenance items we had performed at First Truck Center with our reasons for why we chose to have them done professionally. As far as the cost factor, we'll include a link to our blog post down below outlining the exact price of everything we had done. It may sound strange that something seemingly as basic as an oil change would be an item we'd leave to the pros. Why did we pay someone else to do it? Actually, we've never once changed our own engine oil in 15 years on the road. But it's not because we can't. It doesn't require special knowledge, skills, or tools, and many people do choose to change their own oil. The biggest factor is the sheer volume of oil. As we mentioned in part one, our Cummins ISL holds nearly 30 quarts of oil. That's over seven gallons, which is a lot of waste oil to catch and deal with. People who do change their own oil on large engines often replace the drain plug with a device that allows them to turn the flow on and off like a faucet, more easily controlling the volume of oil. We talked for years about installing one of those valves, but didn't because of a place called Speedco. It's like Jiffy Lube for diesel RVs, and we went there for years. They have long hours, there's no appointment needed, and the pricing was so good that it was hard to justify doing it ourselves. Unfortunately, Speedco was bought by a larger company, and they promptly increased their prices for RVs dramatically. Since then, we've started talking again about installing an oil drain valve and doing it ourselves, but we haven't made a decision yet. We've read several reviews where people have reported leaking from those valves, and the simplicity and security of a solid drain plug is hard to match. The consequences of a failure at that critical point could cause serious engine damage. So we're currently back to having our oil changed as part of other maintenance appointments, which does have an advantage. We were never able to get more than the basics done at Speedco since their services are limited. That meant two service appointments instead of one. As far as we're concerned, the fewer appointments the better, especially for us full-timers. The ability to get more items checked off our list in one stop is a big plus. One other reason we get our oil changed by a pro instead of doing it ourselves is that it's typically included as part of an LOF package deal at many places. That's the lube part of the package, or greasing the chassis. This is another item we've never done ourselves for several reasons. First, it would be very hard for us to do a good job. There are so many grease fittings that they're hard to find, and some of them are even harder to reach. It's also easier for a tech to do since they use a piece of equipment that we could never reasonably own. We're not confident that we'd be able to properly lube the entire chassis, potentially leaving ourselves open to steering or suspension problems down the road. 
And since lubing the chassis is so often part of the oil change service and on the same annual schedule, we've always had them done at the same time. It's also just about the dirtiest routine maintenance item on the list, so avoiding getting covered in grease is a plus two. The other item typically included with LOF service is replacement of the fuel filters, specifically the 10 micron fuel water separator and the 2 micron fuel filter. Requiring only a strap wrench with easy access and no special skills needed, this is one we've done ourselves a few times. The only annoyance is dealing with the diesel fuel, which is pretty nasty stuff to handle. Since it's only a small amount, it's not that big a deal, but the fact that it's included in the LOF is the prime reason we usually leave it to the pros to do. They also have a small advantage over us. They can easily pre-fill the filters with fuel, allowing the engine to start right up after the job. Since we don't want to keep extra diesel fuel around, we install the filters dry and reprime the engine by turning the ignition key to the run position for 30 seconds about 7 or 8 times. Again, no big deal and we have no problem changing our own fuel filter sometimes. We also had the air dryer cartridge replaced this time. This is one we usually do ourselves since it's just a spin-on unit requiring only a good quality strap wrench. We occasionally have a shop do it for us when the desiccant cartridge is due for replacement at the same time the oil change is due, since we're here anyway. That gets back to making personal decisions about the maintenance budget and quality of life, which are up to each of us to decide for ourselves based on our own situation. We were here anyway, it needed to be done, we didn't have one on hand, so we just let them take care of it this time. Flushing the cooling system is certainly something we're capable of doing ourselves, but there are a couple of factors that had us do it at a shop. First, it's not done very often, so even though it's a bit expensive, the cost is spread out over many years. Second is the volume of liquid involved. The system holds a lot, and it needs to be flushed out repeatedly. Coolant needs to be disposed of properly, so we can't just discard it. We just don't have the capacity to easily catch and manage all that liquid, and we're not about to damage the environment by just letting it run onto the ground. A surprise benefit of having First Truck Center take care of this for us was that we learned about OAT coolant. Since we generally assume that the manufacturer knows best, we normally replace parts and supplies with exactly what came from the factory. So if we'd done this ourselves, we probably would have gone with the same green coolant we've always used. Turns out that coolant technology has improved a lot since we bought our RV in 2005, and red OAT coolant is not only better for our engine, but lasts a lot longer. So in the end, we save back some of the cost by extending the time before another coolant replacement will be needed. Vehicles equipped with air suspensions need to have the ride height set correctly. If it's not, it can cause serious drivetrain damage. This is one of those things we know how to do, but the consequences of saving that money by doing it ourselves could come back to bite us with a very expensive self-inflicted wound. Just setting the height correctly isn't enough, and the professional eyes we had looking at it paid off this time around. In inspecting the system, our tech discovered that the bushings in the control rod were coming apart. This is something we might easily have missed, potentially leading to an expensive repair later on. We're not professional RV technicians. Periodically having a pro do a thorough inspection can make sure that the most crucial and expensive safety components are in good working order. It's their job to know what to look for, even if we haven't noticed a specific problem. They retorqued the charge air cooler clamps, inspected the belts and tensioners, the brakes, suspension and steering, along with fluid levels and condition. During these inspections is when they discovered a problem with our right tag axle. The inner wheel seal had started to leak. If left unchecked, this could eventually lead to a seized wheel bearing, leaving us stranded on the side of the road, or worse, with a fire. Our tech took a photo so we could see how wet it is around the seal. This is exactly the kind of thing us non-professionals could easily miss, or not even know to check for in the first place, and there are tons of things to inspect. To repair the seal, they pulled the wheel, the brake drum, the oil bath hubcap, and the two large nuts that hold everything onto the axle. Then they removed the outer wheel bearing and the rest of the assembly. This left the bare axle and allowed for a thorough inspection of all the parts. Here's the culprit, our inner wheel seal. 
our wheel bearings got a clean bill of health, so they don't need to be replaced, which is a good indication that first truck caught the leak early. A little gear oil and the inner bearing can go back in. After the assembly is back in place on the axle, more oil is applied to the outer bearing and it's ready to go. Then our tech reinstalls the two big locking nuts. Not only are specific torque settings required, but also a special torquing sequence. The installations get checked and double checked. The brake drum goes back in place, followed by the wheel and tire. Another member of the team comes out to do a final triple check on the all-important torque setting. Then tightens up the lug nuts. The oil bath hubcap gets reinstalled and filled with fresh gear oil. Lug nut torque is important too, so a final tightening is next. The hubcap and lug nut covers go on and we're all set to drive safely again. The only additional requirement whenever wheels are removed is that the lug nut torque gets rechecked after driving. This slip reminds us to get that wheel checked again after 50 to 100 miles. So we stop by a few days later for a quick check of the torque. Each RVer's abilities, needs, budget, and comfort level will vary. So this is by no means a mandate for how you should maintain your rig. We also didn't talk about some items that weren't due, like servicing the transmission and hydraulic systems. We'll cover those in a future video. And if you're wondering about our generator maintenance, no one else has ever touched it except me. I always change the oil and filter, clean the spark arrestor, replace the air cleaner and fuel filter, and flush the cooling system myself. We even have three videos showing how to do these routine maintenance items. We hope this overview of how we make our maintenance decisions provides some insight about what works for us and gives you a few ideas about what might work for you too. Again, we'll put a link to our blog post down below with more details, including a breakdown of what these types of services cost and a blank copy of the spreadsheet we created to track our chassis maintenance schedule. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and turn on channel notifications. If you'd like to support the production of these videos, get access to special premium content, and even get your name in the credits. Visit us at patreon.com slash rvgeeks to find out how you can play a part in helping us make great content for our fellow RVers. A special thanks to everyone who's already done that. As always, safe travels, and thanks for watching.